super discounts on merchandise, massive sales on courses from Chessable, Chessable and Chess24 bundles, with new deals appearing every day. Visit chess24.com forward slash deals. And queen takes f3. Oh, what is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing else to say. Wow. Creating the future of the sport. Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. 10 months, 10 tournaments. The world's best players online and on TV. So let's take someone with a random, with a random account, with a random name that just seems attractive. Play live online against the world's top chess players while they stream their thoughts live. As a Chess24 Premium member, seize the chance to have your moment of fame. Get a peek inside their lives with question and answer sessions, in-depth teaching, analysis and interviews. The Champions Chess Tour, with countless accompanying events, is happening now. Tune in on Chess24. So this is the broadcast tool here, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see in all its glory. You can see the notation. You can also see the engine evaluation next to each move and also how long they spend. What I like is you can make your own moves on the board. You can check the alternatives to what the players did. And even for the moves you make, you get the computer evaluation here. Fantastic. Then you get it quicker and better as a premium member, such as yours truly. What I also like, there is a chat function. You can exchange things yeah. with people from all over the world. If you want to see something else, let's say you're watching a tournament and you want to see all the games at once, no problem displaying. I have no idea how many games there are, like 128 games at the same time. You can do even more. This is a team competition. You click on multi-board. That's beautiful. You can see all the eight games going on at once. You can see the games and standings, which I... What we got? I'll click around. Games and standings, here. Yeah. Analysis, if we click on that tab, that's Let's a nice click tab. on it. You can see that it's a great little graphical illustration. The red line is zero, that is the absolute even mark. And if the white bars are go up, the further up they go, the bigger the advantage. And the black bars show a black advantage. Then there is a database, and here we get the alternatives. And we, if we click on a move in the database, bam, yeah. it gets played on the board. Fantastic. And then the PGN can even be downloaded. I like that feature. Yeah. Whatever tournament or game you're following, you click it and you open it in the program of your choice. Yeah, and one of the great things I like to see as well is when we get a video from the playing hall. I like to see them in their seats, nervous, you feel the tension, you feel like you're there, don't you? Chess is really becoming a spectator's internet sport. Great that we can see that. I also love to see um, the fact that we can get in some of our friends' 
to join us during the broadcast. And it's all interactive, that's what we love. And a lot of overview functions there. A lot of great functions there, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you take advantage of all of them. Let's get back to the, uh, to the commentary. Keep tweeting us, hashtag C24Live. We love to hear from you. Ask us anything about, mainly about Lawrence Trapp's life. But if you have other questions, they're also welcome. Also send us anything you like about Jan Hashtag C24Live. Absolutely. Uh, Take your chat to the next level with carefully selected collections featuring some of the best video series from Chess24. Buy the courses to own them forever, save up to 60% or go premium and access all series while having all other privileges of premium membership. Learn more at chess24.com slash deals. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess24 Premium members. Train like a champ, with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Girlfriend and Co. will help you improve your chess. Play a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go Premium and challenge yourself. All right, welcome everybody. We're here for Banter Blitz. Um, it's uh, been quite a while since I uh, have played any of these. I've been very busy with tournaments uh, and whatnot. I uh, had, World, I had you know, World Cup and then, Sink, and then Sinkfield Cup and Grand Chess Tour and then... Um, and then the 960 event that just finished, and now I'm in Montenegro for Euro Club Cup. But uh, we're all here now and um, and ready to get started. So uh, let's um, let's see who wants to play. Uh, I will just put my link to the trustable courses in the chat, uh, just because I. Um, it's always good to uh, to advertise those. I'm going to try to play the repertoire as best I can. So just put this courses in the chat here. And just to be clear, I'm only going to interact with the Chess24 chat, uh, not with YouTube or Twitch. So sorry about that. Um, let's just see, I'm resizing this here. And then, okay, I think we can get the show on the road. Let's see who wants to play. We'll start with Tumke. Let's see. Good luck, Tomb K, and I will do my best. So I'll we'll start with D4. This is Shankman repertoire. He's played D5. It's fine. And then I... Uh... Okay, so A6, I was always recommending playing C5 and trying to play a better version of the exchange slot uh, where Black will have already... Because here he's going to have to play B6, I think, uh, sooner or later. I don't really see another plan available to him. So when that happens, um, I guess he can in theory play e5, but it feels a bit far-fetched. Uh, when e6 comes, um, or when b6, when b6 comes, I will take it, and then he will not be able to take back with the a-pawn, which is something Black is not thrilled about. So he will have to take back with the c-pawn, and then we will get a version of the exchange Slav where Black's bishop on c8 is stuck inside the pawn chain. So. In general, I don't love playing the exchange slav with white, but you will. Uh, but I'm okay with doing it if I get an improved version. Okay, so he's played knight h5, which I don't really think he wants to open the h file. So I'm going to play bishop g3. And to people asking about the time control, I'll happily play three two or five zero. I might play a three zero game here or there, but I don't like that's a bit fast for me i don't love the whole flagging element of it i'm also extremely tired i got to macedonia yesterday and um massive jet lag but i'm hanging in there 
right, so queen f6, I'm not sure I understand, but I'm just going to keep developing normally. Maybe he should play with g6 and bishop g7. Um, but yeah, he's going to suffocate under the space advantage if he doesn't do something to break out pretty soon. So he's played b6, but now I think he's going to regret uh, bringing the queen out because I can go queen i4 and after bishop d7 because his queen has left d8 I have them move bishop b5 which I believe wins the game immediately um, now he didn't have to go down this hard but I still think the position is sort of uh, suspicious for black yeah so here I think it's pretty clear the queen f6 move was not good yeah, thanks for the uh, congratulations and condolences on the World Cup, everybody. Um, it was certainly one of the best performances of my life, but, you know, uh, I suspect the, the final match will haunt me for a long time. So that one, but this should fall apart very soon. Um, try to think the best way to finish it off. F95, Queen D8. Knight d7, a b5, queen a8. I can start with bishop d7 and then knight e5. Uh, do this. Let's, let's just start with bishop d7. It's a bit more idiot proof, and I'm so tired today that that's something that I will place a high premium on. So knight e5. And now, maybe I should have started with knight e5 to avoid rook d8. But if he plays rook d8 here, I can play rook h4, and rook f4 is coming. Uh, so maybe he should play queen d8, but it's sort of hard to believe that's going to hold together. Queen d8, I can play, for example, queen c6, and then his rook will have to move. And position seems like it should collapse. Windy, I can also just like play e4 and blow it all up if I want to. But have I played Duda before? Yes, I have. And I also have a fantastic score against him. So it was, that made it particularly depressing to lose one. I knew that if I made it to the final, I'd play somebody who I, um, who is historically I've scored extremely well against. Um, all right, so let's go queen c6 and harass this rook, ask it where it wants to go. But yeah, I played Duda at the Prague Masters earlier this year and completely blew him off the board. I think that was his last loss actually, because he didn't lose in the World Cup. And then he played well in the rest of the Prague Masters, but we played in round two and then that probably was the critical game of the tournament because he got second and I got first. Yeah, so rook c8 will not do him any favors after cb6, and yeah, this game sort of fell apart for black. Yeah, he can't even play f6, there's knight g6, so I think it all just sort of, well, that was the best move, I'm pretty sure, but I also don't think it will save him. In fact, I'm quite confident it won't. Uh, so... I see some boring moves that probably win. Um, I'm sometimes I'm too professional and extremely boring, but let's just string the queen back to a4 and try to maintain the pin. Of course, I could have, for example, taken everything on d7 and then just gone b takes c7, king d2, rook c1, knight a4, and I will, um, and I will win an end game slowly, but this is a bit more aggressive. Thanks for your excellent coverage of the E5 sideline and your trustable chapter on QGA. Well, thank you. I do my best. Uh, put my trustable uh, course here in the chat once more, uh, which this is where you can buy the Shanklin repertoire, uh, and um, which I'm basically playing here. And I'm still potentially in negotiations, but I wouldn't be surprised if another Shanklin course comes out not too long from now. Uh, so maybe that's something for people to look forward to. All right, let's just castle and take the C file. Yeah, that's not going to save him. So now it, uh, Blacks should have lost this game like five moves ago, but now 
rest assured he won't last another five. So he will probably resign here. I'm, I'm thinking of doing an opening course. Um, but yeah. I think this is the time to resign. So good game, Tim K. I think Queen F6 was not brilliant. Um, all right, let's play with Happy Sunshine. Good luck to you, Happy Sunshine. Let's have a good game from Australia. Very nice. Uh, all right, so I advocated the classical Sicilian in my lifetime repertoire thus far. So I'm going to play it. I played it actually in the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. Uh, I just played the repertoire. It was Blitz, so it didn't really matter much. I got like a slightly dubious position against Caruana and then was completely winning and then lost. It's just Blitz. It's kind of random. Dominguez was out prepared me. I forgot my stuff. Um, and then I got a very good position against Fiddler. Yeah, so here, one big appeal of the classical society is you just can't play the English attack. Like here, Knight G4 is already a huge problem. And I think White has. White already just looks worse to me. Yeah, so he takes that, and I think I can take on e3 here, um, but maybe it's, nah, it takes two. He will have e5 at the end, so I'm just taking back, and the, I'm attacking this bishop, which doesn't really have a square, because I think it probably just has to go back to c1, so that after queen b6, he doesn't lose stuff, because here already, I think I'm taking his toys. And uh, I have no shame. I'll go grab that pawn. I don't believe I can open the position fast enough to make me regret it. Which is better for lower-rated players, semi-slav or queen's gambit declines? Um, it's hard to say because I don't think it should be that contingent upon rating. Also, guys, I lied. I'm not going to take that pawn. Uh, I don't think it should necessarily be contingent upon rating, but rather on what you do well and what you don't have experience in. Because, I mean, if you take the Queen's Gambit decline in the semi-slav, you're basically looking at the best solid option Black has against um, against d4 and the best uh, dynamic one he has. I mean, you, I guess you could make a case, I don't know, maybe the QGA is more solid than the QGD, or maybe the Grunfeld is more dynamic than than the semi-slav. But in general, I think you're looking at a very solid option and a very dynamic option that are both like, top tier openings and uh i think that what you should be trying to do when you're a low rated player is broaden your horizons and get experience playing a different range of middle games so like if whatever you've been working on or playing so far against d4 has been very aggressive like if you've been playing grunfeld and king's onion over and over again in general i think probably adding the qgd to your repertoire will grow you more as a chess player uh, but if you've been playing very solid stuff, if you've been playing, you know, this like a, a classical Slav or like an A6 Slav or or something like this, then I think you're probably going to get a lot more out of um, out of learning the semi-Slav. So I think it depends a lot more on your style and how you've played chess so far as to which course will be more useful for you. I mean, and that's truly just me being as honest as possible. I mean, if I were a remotely reasonable salesman, I would just say, well, obviously it's a semi-slav. I don't think that's always the case, uh, but I think, yeah, it's probably a, a long answer for what was not intended to be a long question, but um, that's what I would say. Yeah, so here, I mean, that black is slightly better because I have one pawn island instead of two and my pieces are nice and active. It's not the end of the world for white, uh, but um, yeah. So Batman says, what do you think of this Veshnikov Sicilian? It's uh, it's a very, very, very high level opening. It's one of the few openings that I believe is really only appropriate for a player even stronger than me. Uh, because, like, I still care about winning games with the black pieces. That's something I like to do. Uh, it's something I want to do to become better. It's not like I just want to draw my way through to the top. And I still play against a fair amount of people who are a bit lower. I'm just starting to get to the point now that I'm like in the mid 2700s uh, that um, that it might not that I'm sort of getting to that level where I can just draw with black and that's fine. But basically, the the Sveshnikov is ex an extremely good opening. The only problem with it is if White wants to make a draw, I cannot count the ways that he can do it. I cannot count the ways he can just get a, an incredibly easy risk free position. And that's very very straightforward and takes almost no effort at all. Uh, so in any game where a draw is an unacceptable result or not one that you're thrilled about, uh, the Sveshnikov is just a bad opening. 
And it's actually, I think, an incredibly good opening to play for a win against guys you know are going to come after you. Uh, so when you're seeing someone at like, you know, 2750, 2800, who's only ever playing, you know, like super elite events, and they're playing with guys where A, a draw with black is totally fine. So if they want to force a draw, that's a total non issue. Uh, but B, these guys are always well prepared and fighting against you in the main lines and really trying to, to push you hard. You're going to, uh, they're not going to make the draws. You're going to be able to just play real chess. So in general, I think Sebastianikov is objectively a fantastic opening. It's just in practice, it doesn't really strike me as a very sensible one until you're at like a really high level. So maybe that's why I haven't played as much. I have toyed with the idea of playing with it, with it a bit. Has my opinion changed that Knight C3 is the only serious option against the French? I wouldn't say it's the only serious one. Like if you play the like if you play the French and someone plays something other than Knight C3, you can still lose. Trust me, I did against Kariak and when it mattered most. Uh, but I do think Knight C3 is the only one that should be theor- challenging from a theoretical point of view. I mean, but okay, look at my game with Kariak and I equalized objectively on move two with no particular discussion. But at the same time, uh, I didn't understand the structure well enough, and he outplayed me in the middle game, and I got myself made it. So, it, you know, it, it's – you have to um, – if you're playing the French with black, knight c3 is the most challenging option. That doesn't mean you shouldn't know what to do against the other ones. So, yeah, these pawns are crashing through. What changes did you see in St. Louis around the club? Well, they've clearly expanded and they're growing and getting bigger and buying more space. So I haven't seen exactly what they've done with it yet. There's still a lot of construction, but I look forward to whatever that might bring. All right, so Happy Sunshine is still playing this game, which I'm a little surprised by, but it is his right. This game should just almost take this. Of course, this game is absolutely over, but uh, I guess you know, he's going to make me give mate. It's fine. Um, let's see if I can mate him before he loses on time. Be able to, you know, made him before he loses on time. Is there a made in one here? Is there a made in one? Uh, I don't see it. He's gonna lose on time. Rookie five, king d4. That's funny. All right, whatever. Um, good game to uh, happy sunshine. Let's see who else wants to play. Uh, pawn holder. This guy's got a really high rating, and I'm really tired. Let's see. Oh, I think I've played this guy before. Um, I'm really tired. Let's see if he can take me out. I'm from 1500 to 3100, so it's a bit of a jump. All right, so I gave knight c3 in the course. Does he want a king's Indian or does he want some um, folks? He wants king's Indian. I gave Gligorich, which was meant to be a very practical option. Um, See if that holds true. Okay, bishop g4 is not a great move. Um, it's a little tricky, like after c5. I just know nothing about chess. Um, maybe. Well, let's see. What is the c5? Um, I guess if I take it, he's going to go queen a5 is his big idea. And then if I castle dc e5, knight fd7, he's sort of attacking my stuff. Let's just take the space with d5. I don't know what his big idea is here. All right. So we'll find out, I guess. But in general, I'm going to probably play like knight d2 next. Yeah, let's just go knight d2. Um, I don't get this knight b6 move either because uh, I thought the whole point of playing this way for black was that when I play a3, b4, he can play b6 and sort of hang tight. And that's not going to be a thing anymore. So a3, b4 is going to be much harder to, to meet. And without the light squared bishops, I mean, my light squared bishop obviously wasn't a great piece. Um, it's going to be very hard for him to generate counterplay here. 
Uh, so yeah, there. I probably don't want to let him take on c3 because then c4 can become a weakness. So I'll start with rook f c1 and hopefully play for like a3, rook b1, and b4 in short order. All right, so he wants a Benoni structure, which I suppose makes some sense, but I'm also skeptical because um, his knight on b6 feels rather misplaced as it will get in the way of his ability to play for a6 and b5, which would be the typical Benoni plan. All right, so f5 is very aggressive. It's probably a good move. Um, I think it's sort of what he has to do. Let's play f3. Um, not sure which way I want to take back on e4. In general, I would think with a knight, but yeah, probably just with the knight is fine. I don't see a reason to change much. Yeah, I feel like my rooks are sort of dumb now, but Jamal's why queen e2 over knight e2 and the bishop on g7 would be annoying. b2 might hang in some cases, I don't know. Uh, this knight on c3 doesn't feel great, but okay. So this I think should be good for me because it will be very hard for him to get um, to get g5, g4 through. And let's see, if I start by harassing this knight, I'm ready to play a5 and b4 when he'll not be able to play c4. So yeah, I, he just clears out of the way preemptively, but my thought was I could not play b4. Maybe he can take it and go rook c8, but I feel like I'm opening the queen side pretty fast here, and hopefully I'll be able to make something happen with that. All right, so that I was not expecting. Um, if I go knight b5, can he stop my knight from getting to e6 and causing damage? Not easy. So, and also I can play dc, and then let's start with knight b5. This feels like a good move. I'm also sort of tempted to just take d6 next. He probably has to play rook fc8 here. So that one... I thought it was I could stick a knight on e6. I guess he can go rook c8 and then knight e6, rook c1, rook a8, but queen b5. I, I, I can't resist putting a knight on e6, I'm sorry. Maybe he can just go a5 and give an exchange and hope that this pawn matters, but I think that's going to do well, in a position with open files for the rooks. I mean, he can take this one and then on c1, but. I'm ready with queen b5, and I'm going to get my material back, and then strategically this feels very dubious for black with the open c file and all these weak squares. Have I ever, have I always been a pro, or did I leave a regular job? My last regular job was I was a soccer referee when I was 13. Does that count? I've always been a pro chess player. I went to college at some point, but even then I was largely a pro chess player. Boy, am I tired, but maybe I can save this game. Well, I'll save it. I'm not even doing that badly, but. All right, so he does give an exchange, but I think if he wanted to, he could have done this in a better way. So now I can take this rook. I guess he has to take with the rook now because he wants, really. So now my thought was, so I guess if I take on b4, if he plays knight ed3, Bishop c5, knight c1, that seems okay for him. Um, if knight e d3, I can just go like rook c4. I can go rook c5. Actually, I like that a lot. Rook b4, knight e d3, rook c5. He has to take with the knight. Seems very bad for black, so. I think this will simplify. He gets the exchange back, but I get back my sacrificed pawn. And then his knight on c5 looks nice, but it um, it doesn't do very much, and he's left with a lot of weaknesses. What kind of news do you crave, if any? I don't know. I try to keep up to date with the world, but it's not it's not like I'm like randomly opening BBC or New York Times every day. Um, especially in this era where like most news is depressing. So yeah, of course I completely missed bishop c3. So I'm gonna go down a pawn, but um, with any luck it won't matter so much because knight c4 is gonna be a really good piece. Um, 
And all right, so he doesn't even want the pawn on a5. Let's just go knight c4. I guess he wants to play bishop d4, but yeah, okay. I'm sort of this guy's very fast, so I have to pick up the pace a little bit. Um, bishop d4 is going to be annoying. Let's go rook d1 to stop it. At some point, I'm going to try to get e5 through. Um, so let's go queen c2, I guess, harass this bishop a bit. Now knight d6 is a threat. All right, there, let's go queen d3, keep some squares under control. I could imagine, all right, let's, uh, I can't take it easily. Let's go back to b1, seems like a good square. King h6, huh? Okay, h3. Just keep everything nice and solid first. Rook c7. Let's go king h1. Get out of the way. Forward uh, now, queen b3. I have to break through at some point, but it's not that easy to do. All right, so now knight d6 is a pretty legitimate threat. He goes there, that makes sense. Let's go queen b3. I'm sort of moving around in circles here kind of aimlessly, but uh, maybe I'll be able to make progress in a second. I think I was starting to see a plan. So here, let's, um, let's go rook b1 and start to harass from another direction. This bishop on c3 is sort of annoying to get rid of, but once I manage, I should be in good shape. So there. And then the bishop will probably have to move because you know now if queen d6, queen f6, I really am ready with uh, knight d6. Whoa, knight e4. Of course, I missed this completely, and now I feel like a dunce for not making the draw. All right, so take, and then I guess queen d3. If he plays queen e4, I'll have queen b7 at the end. All right, well, he'll have bishop a5, but oh man, why am I so bad at chess, guys? Let's go h4 and then maybe pray to checkmate him at some point. Right, so he's, I couldn't have. Um, yeah. So now I'm hoping to mate him, but maybe it's a far fetched dream. No, it's just been sort of outplayed in, in an egregious way. It's not that easy for him here, though. All right, yeah, that's a good move. So I guess I have to go rook f7, but now he just goes g4 and I'm gone. Right. No, no, he blundered that, but I was lost if he played g4. All right. So now I'm a pawn up by some miracle, but I should just, this game no longer has any relevance of queen, take, back. Let's see if I'm in time to, All right, I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't have auto queen on. Anyhow, good game, pawn holder. Uh, it was a little back and forth and weird, but we got it done. All right. Um, let's see who else wants to play. Let's play with Mochilo. Which looks like he has an animated banana as his picture. So good luck uh, to Mochilo. Is chess playing a tradition in my family? No, not in the slightest. I was the first chess player of the group. Uh, they, they're not chess people. All right, so um, back to classical Sicilian. Hopefully I'll be able to banter a little bit more this time with an opponent who's not quite as challenging, but you never know. All right, knight takes c6 makes no sense. It just strengthens my center. And as I've mentioned in the course many times, I think that the only possible ways you can challenge a bishop on g7 in the Sicilian is to um, castle long and go give mate or to... Um, or to play c3, d4, and neither of those things have happened here. So black should be in good shape. Let's continue to gain space. Oh, sorry guys, I played with a non-premium. Um, in case I haven't said it already, I'm very tired. Uh, okay, f5. I really don't believe in this kind of style of attack against a bishop on g7, but it's one thing you can be a non-believer and then until you get mated and that's sort of embarrassing, so. I'll have to be a bit careful, but I think I should be in good shape. Um, so 
I'm Bishop on G7 and I don't have sex or just such good pieces that it's hard for me to imagine I I get made it here. And by playing F5, he has weakened the E5 square and the E4 pawn by extension. Okay, so there, let's just keep grabbing space and looking for play on the open files. So now he's threatening to move the knight somewhere, so I should probably take this. If he takes with the pawn, the b3 score is going to be a huge issue for him. So let's go queen h5. Endgame should all be fantastic for black. Yeah, endgame should be great. The b3 score is going to be really bad. Yeah. Hi, guys. Yeah, thank you for the congratulations. Um, it's good to be back and playing Banter Blitz. I'm currently in Macedonia. I'm playing Euro Club Cup soon, but. Um, it's, uh, I will be able to deploy one more banter blitz between now and then. Okay, so rook c1, let's stick the rook on b3, which freezes his knight in place because of the hanging d3 pawn behind it. Next thing we do is bring the knight closer to the action. So let's say knight f6. If he plays king f2, I'm ready with knight g4. Yeah, so here let's go, where do I want this knight? Probably c5 is better than e5 actually. Uh, because defending the um, defending the pawn on a4 could matter if I want to play rook b8. Um, and uh, I could also imagine the knight wanting to come to b3 later. So here, if I play rook b8, uh, he can play rook c2, I guess. And then knight e6 feels really devastating. Let's go rook b8. And now we see why the knight on c5 is better than e5. All right, so this loses a pawn. I'm just wondering which one I wanna take. I think what I wanna do is take on D3 and then bring the knight back to C5 instead of taking on B2. So now I'm threatening to take the E4 pawn, which will matter a lot more. And if he wants to defend it, I'll be able to take on B2 and land with a rook and his knight on F2 is gonna be bad. All right, so he does that, but now I can take this pawn, which is a much more valuable one. Uh, and it feels like, yeah, so he wants the a4 pawn, but I suspect I should just checkmate him with rook c8, rook c2. Uh, that looks very convincing. Yeah, this should be mate. These pieces are too far away, so check. And then yeah, he's going to get mated, and even if he isn't, he's going to lose all of his stuff. So here, I guess I can start with bishop d4, which threatens knight g3 and made on, or maybe I can start with knight g3. Hang on, knight g3. Oh, I see it, this is nice. We're gonna go knight g3, king g1, bishop d4, knight f1, rook h3, and rook h2 mate. That's a nice mate. I told you guys I made him. It took me a second, but I got there. All right, good game, Mochilo. Let's see who else wants to play. I'll do my best to play with, um, with premium. So let's play with uh, Hans Jahad. All right, Hans Jahad, good luck to you from Germany. All right, so let's see what he wants. Benko. All right, so I gave some interesting lines in my course. Bishop takes a6, I actually think is a pretty cooperative move. I think it's a better line for black to play g6 and not and leave the pawn a6 for a while. But yeah, here this one is um this one I think is quite unpleasant for black after we just go g3, king g2, and a4. Uh, and the one thing about this middle game that you have to understand, which took me a long time to grasp uh, for some reason. I don't know why, but the big thing is at some point you're gonna go like um knight b5, clog the b file. And oftentimes black is gonna end up playing with um knight e8, knight c7 to try to break it open. When that happens, you do not want to trade dark squared bishops. You want to play b3, rook b1, and leave this bishop on d2, and it will end up much better than a bishop on g7. So I don't know if we'll see something like that this game or not, but we'll find out. So yeah, after bishop d2, like, I think this is already just unpleasant. Yeah, so here I'm going to go uh, knight b5, and then he will have to play like queen b6 or queen to d8. So not lose material. So um, yeah, so there's queen b6, and then maybe we'll get to see my point in action. 
So I'm going to start with queen c2 to protect d4 and protect b2 and try to make sure not to fall for any nonsense. Um, and then, like, if he were to play knight e8 here, I think bishop c3 would be a huge mistake. So he doesn't play knight e8, but I'm going to go rook b1, and then I'm going to go b3, and I'm going to keep everything nice and solid. Uh, so the reason is that if you can imagine... I think exchanging the bishop makes some sense if I can keep the knight on b5. But if he plays knight e8 and knight c7, I'm clearly not going to uh, prevent this bishop, this knight exchange. And then once that happens and you've played b3, if you exchange the dark square bishops, you're going to uh, have a really hard time getting b4 and a5 through. While if you sort of leave the bishop on d2, his bishop can end up pointing into nothingness. So here he has played c4 attacking the f2 pawn as well as potentially preparing for knight c5 which seems very sensible um i'm going to play bishop b well hang on if i play bishop b4 he has rook takes a4 so i can't do that i can start with that was a clever move on his part yeah i really want to move this bishop but then he'll play rook a4 i shouldn't have allowed this i should have played h3 first um, so rook takes a4 is coming if I move my bishop, right? I don't really, I mean, maybe, I think we have to go rook f1. It's not a good sign. So yeah, here I've misplayed this pretty badly, and now I think black is basically fine. But even here, I still think I'm probably for choice practically. Yeah, I couldn't play bishop g5, rook a4. He has to play knight c5, and then... What if I play queen c4, rook a4, b4, queen b5, tick, tick, and he's fine. Yeah, I've misplayed this. All right, knight, if knight back to c3, he's going to go queen b3. Yeah, I've misplayed this very badly. If h3, h3 might be reasonable. h3, if rook a4, knight c3 wins. If knight a4, knight a3, it's probably okay. Yeah, I don't want to let him go knight d3. I think I have to play this move. He should probably play knight f6 now. But then I've at least um, forced his knight back. But yeah, c4 is a good move. So now if bishop e3, knight f takes e4. It's not look great for me. Um, but I maybe I can do it anyway. So let's say we start with bishop e3. He has to play knight f takes e4 now, and then I can play queen takes c4, and he cannot play rook takes a4 because of queen takes a4. So this, I think, sort of worked out. Um, I've misplayed this, but I still like my position. Let's see, and I thought was I could take this one now, and he cannot play rook a4. And if I can play b3, I'm a pretty happy camper. I didn't think he could do that, um, but maybe he will just be able to get enough counterplay to, to draw the game. But if he's clearly getting one pawn back for the exchange, but I suspect uh, if knight bd4, he can take it and go knight d2. All right, so I got to go knight c3. He will get one pawn back for the exchange. Um, and then he will struggle for the draw. He may be able to make it here, but objectively i suspect maybe this position can be saved for black after say rook b1 and bishop c3 yeah, knight c3 though now his bishop gets frozen so but i guess it's hard for me to take advantage yeah not easy my knight doesn't get to the scores it needs to get to he's just in time knight g5 h6 is nothing well, I can still try. So I'm going to go here. And now I just have to prevent him from getting his pieces out. So let's start with rook d8, make it harder for him to play e5. But now this is probably a draw. G7. Let's again make it harder for him to play e5. 
as soon as he can break his bishop out, uh, he makes a draw very easily. So my goal is to not let that happen, but maybe he can just go e6 here and meet rook d7 with bishop e7, and I don't have anything. That would be a bummer, but he can play knight c6, but even if once his bishop is out, he should save it. So let's go here. Bishop is still bad. So king f3, and I will win the d6 pawn for sure, but um, I think the re if he can trade the bishop for the knight, then the remaining uh, four, versus, four versus three is a draw. So here, we're going to rook there. And I get ready for some kind of knight d8. This guy's playing good. What can I say? All right, let's go g4. Let's point out that he cannot easily play g5. Try to kick this king a bit. So check. And then once knight d8 comes, I think I will break through. So yeah, this was a good game from this guy, but I think now I got him. Um, Took some effort, but I got there. So you know you're tired. Take that, and then yeah, now it's gone. Once I, once I've started, once the base of the pawn chain falls. Uh, what's your opinion of which time controls you should play online to improve? General, the longer the better. The problem is like you have to find people willing to play with you, and almost nobody wants to play like classical games online. All right, King f5, Rook d6 is not stalemate. In fact, Rook f6 is checkmate. There, that's one missed mate and one today. All right, ah, uh, let's see what else have we got here. Um, all right, Monkey King, Flanders. What do we got for me? Playing with Flanders. Uh, I should say some words that Flanders will not like, but I think Chess24 wouldn't like those either. But yeah, I don't know. If you can play 15-minute games online, those are probably pretty helpful. Um, good games, Hans Gerard. Um, all right, so let's see if my English Retian sideline repertoire hangs out. I'm still going to put it in the chat just to uh, for completeness's sake. Um, so he's playing with B3, so I, I could just... I can't bring myself to just take c4 and go queen d4 and go pawn grabbing and losing a million tempi. Uh, so I'm just going to play it like a Shankland repertoire on chess level. All right, so let's go bishop f5 on 96, and it's a very solid setup. And whoa, d4? That makes no sense. Um, because I thought the whole goal was to try to um, fight for an e4 break at some point, and now that's clearly not happening. The bishop on g2 is going to be much worse than the bishop on, um, on f5. All right, so queen a5, rook c1. I don't have bishop a3 because of knight d5, so it's just castle. Just have to be careful not to blunder anything, and I'm definitely fuzzy-headed enough that it could happen. So this is a typical theme from one of the lines in the semi-slav, is that... Um, uh, you can often play bishop b4 and provoke, and then the bishop comes back to d6, but the point is that the bishop on d2 is now worse than it would be on c1 because it sort of would like to be on b2 in this structure. Uh, but this only makes sense once white has already committed to playing b3. Um, if Sam wins the U.S. Championship, does he have another book ready? Well, U.S. Championship's coming up, and I've done a lot of work on theoretical rook endgames, which is my next book. Uh, that's still not particularly close to coming out. It's a very dense and demanding book, but well, if I win the U.S. Championship, it'll probably be out not that not that long afterwards. Um, of course, it's unlikely that I'll win. I mean, there's 12 players. I say my odds are I don't know something like 10 percent, but well, stranger things have happened, as the past sort of proves. All right, so how do I want to handle this one? Um, We're locking the position. I think I should start with a six. Um, 
because he's going to want to play a4 to try to get b5 through. And basically, once a4 comes, then when he plays b5, it's harder for him to quickly play queen a4 because his pawn occupies the square that his queen needs. So now, whenever I want, I can play e4 and lock the position and try to mate him. But I think I want to be a little more patient first and start with rook e8. And I'm going to go like e4, knight f8, and then play it sort of like a king's Indian attack. Yeah, like once he plays a4 and I go e4, knight e1. Yeah, so let's go e4. Uh, he should probably play knight e1. And my thought was here that the inclusion of a6 and a4 should be in black's favor because in the structure after bc6, he sort of wants to play queen a4 to attack that pawn, and now he's not going to be able to. Yeah, I don't think you can get away with knight h4. That's too much. Yeah, so here my thought was knight f8. And I think I should basically just mate him here. I mean, I go queen d7, and then um, he's going to uh, have to defend this pawn somehow. So he plays that. And now I believe h5 should just be mate, like without a ton of discussion. I'm not a great attacking player, but I think this, this really feels like his checkmate. And he's going to be very slow to make queen side counterplay. So he plays h4 himself, but that shouldn't help. Um, I will go knight h7, and g5 is coming. Do I now have Johan Helston in his strategy books? I know who he is. I don't think we've ever met, uh, at least not that I can recall. I don't know about his strategy books, but uh, so yeah, I wouldn't venture any, um, any opinions. All right, so if I play g5 right now, I'm at least a little bit annoyed by hg5, knight g5, and then f4. So I want to get my king out of the way first and get ready for rook g8. How long does it generally take you to learn a new opening and be ready to play it in a classical game? It depends what the opening is, like, and what you... It also depends what you refer to as a new opening. So, for example, if you want to... Um, if in the knight, if in the knight or for white, instead of bishop e3, e5, knight b3, you want to play knight f3 and you want to learn knight f3, you can easily learn that in an hour or two. But like, if you're like, well, I've played the knight for my whole, whole life and now I want to play the Berlin, that's a lot more demanding. All right, so here I think I'm going to go rook a b8. I don't love exchanging rooks. I'm sort of tempted to play rook a7 and say, look, I have one bad rook. Go, go do something about it. And I have everything else under control, but here because his other rook will struggle to join the game i think i can do this and of course after rook b8 i'll take with the bishop not with the rook i don't care about the b file i just want to keep the b7 score under control um i probably could have even just ignored this rook but all right so he plays knight e2 but that should walk into bishop g4 when actually here is really hard for white to move um What's one opening you would never ever play among serious openings? I've played almost everything, but there's a few I haven't touched because uh, I don't believe in them. One is King's Indian, just because I don't like those positions for black. I'm much more comfortable on the white side. Another is the Petrov. Um, I just can't bring myself to do that. It's I know it's a good opening, but it, I mean, it just feels like at some point, why play chess? Um, but uh, and I don't like the Queen's Gambit except that I've never played that for black either. But I've played just about everything else that's worth its salt. So here I managed to break through against Monkey King. Um, he played f3, which sort of looked like a suicidal move, but I don't really think he had a choice just because he couldn't really wait to like go play, let me play g5 and just crush him. Um, all right, so let's play with Jose Maya. Or Jose Moya. Okay. Jose Moya from Spain. Good luck. Um, at your level, what are the things you focus on to improve? Uh, obviously, I mean, I prepare much deeper than I, I try to prepare deeper every day. I go over a lot of my games and look for mistakes. I solve endless exercises that my coach Jakob gives me. Um, but yeah, I said, Knowing Sam is a hardcore D4, D5 oriented player, I can't imagine him playing Berlin. 
I actually have played Berlin a fair amount in my life. Uh, not a ton. I've had some success with it, but um, uh, if I'm in like a really solid mood, that's the opening I choose. I, I my the Berlin is my screw you and screw chess attitude opening. Uh, but um, but yeah, all right. So this guy has played Bishop E two, which I don't really get. Um, and now he's played F four as well, and I feel like doing this before castling is. Uh, Asking for it. I guess the point of bishop e2 is that after bishop h4, I probably can't get away with um, taking e4. Uh, do I hope? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, well, sorry. Sorry, Jose Moy. I guess we don't get to play. Uh, there we go. I have lost in 12 moves uh, entirely on the board for no other reason. There's the resign button. Uh, so, sorry, Jose Moya. I'll give you a rematch if you want so we can actually play a real game. Um, so it's a jump. Uh, do you hope to reach a place in the candidates tournament at the Grand Prix? Uh, no, I don't hope to win the tournament. Re reaching the candidates would suck. That would be terrible. Um, I, I definitely don't want to win the tournament. I, I would, I'm showing up and trying not to win. Uh, all right. Let's see. We have, oh, we have a GM in the mix. SWBI chess. All right. Uh, from Scotland. Oh, is this Yakov? Is he trolling me? Um, this could be Jakob trolling me. Someone from Scotland. Let's see if he's tro if it's Jakob trolling me. Based on the 2100 rating, I suspect this is a very new account uh, because no GM will have 2100 here. Uh, so probably they just haven't played very many games. So it's somebody who just made a fresh account to play with me. Um, and I suspect it's Jakob messing with me because of the Scottish flag and the GM title. So. That could be the case, but yeah. So basically here, after Bishop, e, but Jakob would play Bishop G5. Yeah, so the big appeal of the classical is that against anything except like Bishop G5 in some cases, you can just transpose to a dragon. And I don't believe in the dragon for white at all if black has not, um, if he hasn't castled queenside. And here, like, it's just a very comfortable position for black already. I wouldn't say he's better yet, but I do think in practice, I would prefer the black side of this position. All right, h3. I don't understand it, but I'm just going to go bishop b7 and rook c8, and it feels like black already. I, would, I already prefer black here. All right, so there, I guess I can go knight d7, and I'm not sure I want to take on c3 next, but I'm entertaining the concepts because he's not easy. Well, he will not be easily able to take advantage of my dark squares. I'm also thinking of potentially playing knight a5. Or knight c5. It just feels like a very comfortable position. Uh, okay, knight d4. So I think taking this and going e5 feels very good. Um, I've always liked these structures for black when especially with the bishop on g7. Like I played a similar one with Stigler. And when this knight comes to e5, it just feels like black is very comfortable. I suspect this may be Yaka, but he played some non-critical line that I would have expected better from him. All right, so there I think we can take this knight uh, because I don't think he wants to take with the queen. And if he takes with the pawn, he gets a very structurally dubious position. If I had to choose another state to live in in the US, which state would you choose? I don't know. I love California, but I, don't know. I mean, it would have to be like, you know, a reasonably central hub with like really nice, good weather. So maybe like Florida or Texas, but like I, I California is the best. Trust me, it's the best. All right. So let's keep ransacking the second rank. If he takes on d6, I will take back, take on f3, take on a2, and I should just be multiple pawns up. So there, sure. I guess I can start with queen h4 and harass this bishop. I forgot Illinois. Yeah, that's a little cold for my taste. I'm sure it has its charms, but not really my thing. All right, let's go rook c2, I guess. Three, huh? So 
Pose work C8 sort of plays itself. Jakob, if this is you, I'm very disappointed in your chest today. You need to play better than this. I guess here you have rook c1, so, but then I have knight takes f3, and you cannot take with the pawn because of queen g3, so this game is over. But yeah, I guess if you made me pick another state, it would be Florida or Texas. Those would be my choices, I think. Check. Check. How are we going to end this one? Check and bishop e5 seems good. I also could just go queen h3 and take his queen. All right, let's just go check and then just take the bishop. That's fine. Um, check. Three. All right. I hope that wasn't Jakob. If it was, uh, we'll have to have a talk later about how to play with white against Sicilian. Oh, Jup's here. Let's play with Jup. Okay, Suerte Jup. Let's have a good game. H3, huh? I think I gave you five against this one, but yeah, I gave you five in the course, but I'm going to play G6 just because. Um, I don't really believe in the dragon for white that much if he's played. I mean, this is a pretty good version for him, but all right, let's try the knight takes d4 line with bishop e6. Like, normally this line loses by one tempo when white plays f3 and h4, but here he will be a tempo down, so that will give black some extra time and hopefully change the character of the game. So, for example, here, I think I can play queen f5 because... If he plays knight d5, I go queen d2, knight e7, king h8, rook d2, and because he hasn't played f3, I can be uh, I can play knight takes e4 at the end, bishop g7, king g7, rook e2, d5, seems fine. Let's go queen f5. I don't believe in knight d5. Um, okay, Yeah, I think knight d5 works fine for me. The lack of a pawn on f3 should work in black's favor. Yeah, so this is just an improved version of the dragon. All right, so here the question is, do I want to play an end game or a middle game? I think I probably just want to take with the pawn and keep the queens on the board. If I take with the bishop, he plays knight d5. And black is definitely fine uh, after... Maybe I should just play the end game. Bishop f6. Yeah, let's just play the end game and be boring. So... Take on d2. Of course, I will not take back on f6. I go king g7. And then probably I'll play g takes h5. You can run with the king, but maybe I can do that. But g takes h5 is not so bad. Like, it's it's very annoying for him to actually harass this pawn in a meaningful way. Uh, so let's say I start with rook c8, and I'm ready with rook c5. And yeah, so this pawn looks like it's sort of frozen as a weakness, but it's going to be hard for him to target. And um, and in the meantime, I'm not without my counterplay. So, um, yeah, the king coming to e5 will be very good. Uh, f5 could come at any moment then. And all right, so he plays g3. I think I'm going to provoke him into playing f3 because if he does, then his g pawn will be a huge weakness. So. Oh yeah, Hawaii, I forgot about that. There's a lot of charm to that place as well. All right, so let's go Rick C8. I think black should already be a little bit better here. It's not, it feels more comfortable at least to me. So we can start with B5, let's say, and gain some space. And maybe he can go, yeah, because you can't play B4 ever, so I'm not really scared of much. And... Uh, Do you think that Karo Khan will get a resurgence of players like Fedosev and Artemiev playing it regularly? Um, not really. I think the Karo Khan always has sort of the same reputation where it's not wildly common, doesn't get played a lot. There's a few practitioners who do it and have good results, and every now and then it'll be a fad for a few games. That's normally how the Karo Khan goes. Um, and I think that's sort of what it's doing right now. Um, but yeah. 
Not to bring up bad memories, but do you think Karyakin is still a serious contender for world champ? I don't know. It's tough to sell. I mean, when I played with him in the World's Cup, I did not feel like he was better than me. Um, but, uh, you know, that was just also a short match, so you don't really know. All right. So here this feels like I should – I feel like a race should not be so bad for me. So if I take d5, rook d5 – Rook c4, rook b5, rook e4. Now that's too much. Um, let's start with king e6 and just sort of solidify the position a little bit. Um, additionally, if I want to race someday, if I want to take on d5 and go for rook c4 and stuff like that, I can then play f5 faster. Nepo will play the king's gambit in the world championship. I find that unlikely. So now the f5 is playable. Yeah, let's play f5 and try to complicate the game a bit and what's otherwise been a pretty dull affair. All right, so there, a few ways I can handle this, but let's just gain some space. Perhaps I could have been more incisive, but I was thinking about rook c4, but e f5 was kind of frustrating me. So let's actually lock the queen side. I think it'll be, I'm hoping to win the game on the king side. So locking the queen side feels very logical. So for example, here, I believe after king e3, I can go rook e5 and the pawn ending is lost. In fact, it's actually, he's almost in zoot swan. What is his next move? Maybe he can play rook b4. If he takes that one, I take this. And then let's say I got check, and I don't think he can allow a pawn ending. He disagrees. Rook d5, and then what gives? Isn't the pawn ending winning? Maybe not actually king e4. And... Let's. Rook d5, c4, I guess is, no, it's not going to work either. I think the pawn ending might be a win, so I'm going to give this a try. All right, so c4, I can take, take c4 first, I guess. And then do I want a pawn ending is the question. Take, take d5. Yeah, this has to work, d5. I think my pawn should be too good. He's going to be too slow to get the king over to a4 and take the pawn and come back. Um, what was the most important thing you did with your chess studies across the 2700 mark? Just constant work on calculation over and over and over again until I got better. Um, it's tedious. It's not fun. It can be draining emotionally and it, it's really tough, but it does work. Yeah. So here he's going to go try to play f3 i suppose that makes sense but it's hard to believe even then it's going to be hard for him to make a pest pawn so let's go king a4 f3 i will start with this check and then g takes f3 next you think there is any possibility nepo plays the time and against magnus it could happen i would be surprised but it's not the strangest thing ever yeah, so let's go d3 and then e4 and um, I think that when he plays, he will have to play g4 to make a, ra uh, a race, but he will lose the race. So yeah, hg and then g3 and I win the race. So yeah, it took some effort to grind him out, but I managed a good game jump. Uh, who else wants to play? Oh, Bogues. Why must I lose to this Bogues? I like this guy. Do you think an intermediate player can calc improve a lot just by practicing calculation? I mean, I think that's the most important thing you can do. It's certainly not the only thing you should do. And, you know, if you improve a ton at calculation, the rest of your game lags behind at 1800 level. Eventually, you're going to want to bring the rest of the game up to that same level as your calculation. But it, I do think that's the most effective thing you can do with your training time. All right. So C takes to four, knight of six. Keep on playing classical Sicilians until someone proves me wrong. So this is still part of the course. It's been a while since I reviewed it, but 
this much I can remember. E6. And yeah, I, I don't know why bishop e3 is so common. The best move is bishop f4. All right, so here, this just feels like a bad version for white of a normal Sicilian. I mean, I will have, I'm going to have wasted one tempo on queen b6, queen c7, but white's clearly going to waste the tempo himself on moving that bishop twice, which he just did. And secondly, uh, oftentimes moving that bishop isn't even necessary. You just want to like start throwing g4, g5, and leave the bishop at home when you castle long. The bishop on f1 isn't that much worse than it is on d3. And finally, knight b3 is out of place. So I think white's sort of down like well, maybe half a tempo if I were speaking conservatively, but maybe even more if I want to be really provocative in my statements. So yeah, here we're going bishop b7. If he castles long, um, okay, so a3, uh, I think I, I think I should start with bishop e7, and if he castles short, um, I can just sort of castle short myself and play normally, and if he castles long, b4 should brutalize him. And if he plays g4, I'm going to play b4 because then, um, yeah, so here, uh, okay, I dare you to go take this pawn. What a blunder Hikaru made against me. Did I see it in a second? Yeah, well, I mean, when I played bishop takes e5, I understood I was already winning because it's, um, if he takes with the pawn, his rook was getting trapped on d1. So I already understood that the game was over. Um, but uh, what's the best way to improve your calculation? I would recommend killer chess training. It's where I do my work with Jakob all the time and we do the same kind of work. I mean, I do think he's the man to go to for all kinds of calculation work and... Um, and yeah, he's, he's the best in the world at that. And uh, that's where you should be trained. So here, this position, if I go h4, I really don't think he's going to take my pawn. Could just play g6 and be patient, though. I like g6. There's no reason to start with h4 when um, I might want to play knight g4 someday. Yeah, I don't know. This tactic with the Cario, I mean, it was it was very nice, but it also was very easy. I mean, it's a candidate move. Once you've seen it, there's nothing else to it. It's like a two mover. So, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing that you see a lot more strong players will blunder into and in like rapid or Fisher random. I certainly wouldn't expect to be able to knock out Hikaru like that under normal circumstances. All right, so I don't even know where I want to put my pieces. Rook c8, rook d8. I guess rook c8 seems fine. Um, probably I'm going to have to play b4 at some point, but I thought I could wait at least a little bit so that once after b4, a takes b4, a knight takes b4. First of all, I can wait for him to move the rook away, so I'm no longer worried about like rook a4 or knight a5. Secondly, even if he does play knight a5, I'll have bishop a8. And it, I mean, it's hard for me to see a plan for it because if he ever plays f5, he's going to get mated after gf5 and rook g8. If he ever plays e5, I'm going to take it from him. And here, for example, I think now I'm ready for b4. And I'm not scared of rook a4. I'm not scared of knight a5. My pieces are coming in to harass his stuff. And at some point, I could even consider starting to break a bit and, and do some rash things, but we'll see. If he plays bishop d4, I can go h4 and e5. Um, but let's see. That cannot work. You're going to get checkmated. So rook g8 just straight up looks like checkmate, um, or at least a queen. Um, do I want to take d3 first just to make sure there's no weird f e6, bishop g6 that I don't even believe in anyway? Just go rook g8, right? Bishop g5 and then knight h7 or something. Okay. Let's start with rook g8. I don't think I need to take on d3. Guess he has to play bishop g5 and hope for the best, but I think I can probably just take a tempo off and play e5. Um, is that Leo's mensajes privados on chess 24? No, no, Leo. No, no, Creo. Hay muchos uh, mensajes, pero no, Leo. Si quieres uh, hablar conmigo, 
uh, Abdul Arkanmi website, uh, samshanklin.com, the contact form. Um, and yeah, as you can tell, my Spanish is less than brilliant. It's my third language. French, I'm actually, I speak very well, but Spanish is just bad. Yeah, so I, maybe I could have, there was, there was some chaos coming on after like night H7, FE6. Maybe it worked for me, but I just don't care. I think that um, I can take one move off to secure my center and then get ready for night H7. And so to Batman, why does the Black King on E8 stay on E8 so often in the Sicilian? Well, it's not that often, but in this particular line, why it's only remotely sensible plan is to try to mate you on the king side. You don't really want to go to the queen side and like white's position makes no sense against the king in the center so it sort of stays all right so here he has anchored this bishop which is a bit annoying um and if knight h7 he can play f6 uh, and then he's opening the f file with good counterplay so this actually isn't as easy and now i'm sort of thinking maybe i should have taken that bishop so that i could have played like queen b6 here and gone after his queen side instead because uh, now he can take with the queen, which I'm, but I still think I can take this one. And if queen takes, I can play queen c4. And another problem for white is like every endgame is just going to suck too. Like, for example, like just giving me these pawns. So, for example, after queen d3, queen c4, if he takes my queen, I have rook c4. Uh, knight a5, I don't think works because I have bishop takes g2 and then rook takes h4, and his bishop on g5 will be. Um, will be pinned, but like this end game is just gonna suck. Like he's not mated, but neither am I. And then I've got the bishop pair and this massive pawn mass. Like that's gotta count for something. So rook f2 and now like just trade queens and knight g4 and bishop g5 and it looks horrible. So you know, this is just bad for white. I get to hang with Gasparov at St. Louis. I mean, I know, like I saw him a bit now and then, of course, and I discussed a little bit of chess with him. Uh, but um, I don't know if hang out was the right word, but I definitely got to speak with him, which was a real treat. He's uh, there's not many people out there maybe that will make me squeal like a little schoolgirl when I see them, but like uh, he he's sort of the one. Um, all right, so he can't take my pawn, so let's just activate my pieces. Folks, we're done here. Right, good game, Bogues, but I got you this time. It was fun, Sicilian. All right, who else do we got? All right, let's play with uh, Chess Squad. It's a three-minute game, so maybe I'll get flagged, but we'll see. Lots of Spaniards today. Good stuff. All right, good luck to you, Chess Squad from Spain. Whose team do I think is stronger? I just don't know. I mean, I was on Magnus's team once upon a time, and it seems like I won't be again at this point because he, he seems to not want me, and that's totally fine. It's his decision. It doesn't if I'm totally okay with that. Uh, but I don't know. I don't even know who's on Magnus's team at this point, and I don't know. Um, and I know who's on Nepo's team, but I've never worked with them, so it's hard to tell. But I, I, I don't think this match is going to be decided at home. I think it will be decided at the board. But yeah, so I recommended this bishop e2 move uh, in my course, which, and the big point was that instead of bishop d3, uh, it was that here um, you can uh, take back on c4 with the bishop, but first play a4 to stop him from playing b5, and that wouldn't be possible if you had um, left, uh, if you had put the bishop on d3 instead, because the bishop should be hanging. All right, so this guy clearly has a death wish. Uh, because you just cannot leave your king in the center like that. I don't care what pawn you think you're winning. This this king is going to stay in the center, and I am going to get e4 through, so I think already this is horrible for black. So let's see. Let's just start with queen c2. I was already considering queen b1, a6, bishop takes c4, but I don't think it was necessary just yet. Um, but yeah, how the heck is this guy? Does he want to cast so long? That's not going to offer him much better prospects either. Um, all right, let's go e4 and start gaining space. And once I go e5 and then knight g5, he can't castle short, he can't castle long, I'm ready for knight d6. I mean, I just, I think this was, this was not a pawn worth taking. 
All right, so I guess e5 is sort of begging to be played, but e5, he goes, what, knight d5, knight g5, c5 is his plan. Maybe I can play e5 and start with bishop d6 to not let my bishop get shut down, but let's go bishop d6 first. Knight g5 was also possible, but. All right, so let's start with rook a, b1. I'm clearly not using the a file anymore once he's anchored with a6. I'm threatening bishop takes c4. I've stopped him from playing c5. It's hard to stop bishop takes c4. All right, he either didn't see it or doesn't believe me, so let's find out. Um, and yeah, this is going downhill for black real fast. I guess he can try c5, a, b, c, d, but it should not work. He takes a6 or something is fine. So I thought this was going to fall apart. I mean, his king just can't get out of the center. That's the big problem. So let's take hand. So what do I want to take with? Probably the rook. Rook takes and then if bishop a6. A little annoying. I don't really care if you take that one, but let's see. Um, Let's take this way, I think is probably easier. And if CD4, I think the best is queen a4. And he cannot take on c3 because I'll take everything on d7. And so here I will get my pawn back on d4, remain wing a pawn up. He also is hard pressed to stop. Bishop takes d7. He might have to play something like knight 5b6, which is a very sad move. Even that, I still take on d7. So like... In fact, actually, just straight up, I don't see how he stops it. I guess he can play bishop a8 which is a really sad move. But what else? Yeah, so he does, and now how do I want to finish this off? I can play rook a1, when if he takes on c3, I have bishop d7 and queen a8. That seems pretty good. And if bishop back to b7, I can play the other rook to b1. So I thought this was working, but yeah. All right, let's just take this one and piece up. Um, yeah, okay, let's get the queen out of dodge and get ready for taking stuff. Yeah. Two pieces up, I think I can win this one. All right, good game, chess squad. I think this was not a pawn worth taking. Let's see, who should I play with? Both the Venge of five. I think I've seen you around before. All right. Let's see if we get a rouser or if White plays a chicken line. Um people I, I do remember that quote yeah so this knight bishop b3 move is not great after knight g4 i think maybe queen b6 is too much but yeah basically here once you get a dragon where white cannot challenge you on the dark squares like black is like here already i think black's close to winning um yeah i remember that quote with daniel king i regret it though the the correct answer was not my dog the correct answer was camacho he's my favorite u.s president uh i'm a big fan of his uh, so bishop e6, and yeah, here, like, I have all the space, and he can barely move. Like, after rook a4, is he just straight up losing a pawn already? I think he is. Like, if he plays b3, I just drop the rook back, and I take on a2. Like, white's just already dead lost. But yeah, I am a big fan of President Camacho. Yeah, no, you, you can't give Black the Dark Squared Bishop like this. And I got everything. I got all the pawns fixed, and it, it just this is already just gone. All right, so let's just bring this rook back somewhere and take a2 next, and then this game's over. Let's 
see how he likes the bishop on d4. Castle and like not even ready for f5 soon. But let's just be civil. Start with c5, anchor the bishop, no hanging on c6 or anything like that. I guess start with rook d2, hit this knight, get ready for rook a8, rook a2. Yeah, here comes rook a8 and rook a2. And White's position does not look like much fun. So rook a2, fe6. I can even just go f takes e6 back. But no, we'll play rook takes g2, e takes f7, king f8, and that's checkmate. So, but I'm not even going to give him this bishop. There's no reason. Like, everything wins. I mean, rook a2 was certainly good enough, but why not keep a piece and then mid in as well without sacrificing? Yeah, Avenger, I think I got you this time. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, keep your eye on the prize. All right, how sadistic should I be? The answer is very sadistic. That move was so completely unnecessary, but just why not? Okay, um, let's take the knight. Check. It's then rook d3, bishop f5, you can take it, but rook d3, rook d3 is mate, so. Yeah. Yeah, good game, Avenge. I think that opening did not go well for white. Uh, Stan Marsh, I think we have time for one more. All right, good luck, Stan Marsh. Let's see what we got. Still following the trustful repertoire, which I'll spam in the chat once more. Um, but yeah, at this point, it's been long enough ago that I'm starting to re forget some of the lines. I have to remember not only the lines themselves, but which ones I actually recommended. So here I'm pretty sure I gave C5 uh, and trying to take all this space, which is very uncomfortable for Black to play. There's a lot of positions that the computer does call equal, but it just feels really uncomfortable with no space. Knight h5. We're going to start with bishop d3. It's never a huge concern if black takes this bishop as it helps us gain more space. And then hopefully, hopefully I can put on some kind of strategic clinic, but we'll do my best. Of course, black should play c6, b6, a5, but we'll see if this fellow has another idea in mind. He starts with b6. I don't know if you're allowed to do that. Knight e5 might be annoying. But nah, let's just go b4. I, I think there might have been some line with like knight e5 and then knight b, b e5, b c6, knight b8, knight e5, bishop d6, and queen h5 or something, but I can't remember and I don't want to deal with stuff. I think I just gave b4 in the course and this is fine. Yeah, so a5, a3. Take all the space. Whoa, that's a mistake. Now you're not going to get bishop a6, so your position's going to suck. Um, 
All right. Yeah. If you don't get the if you don't get bishop a six to trade off the white squared bishops, like and you end up with two bad bishops instead of one. Furthermore, even when you do that, you're not supposed to open the queen side for black like this. So I think black's basically lost already. Uh, but we'll see if this guy can prove me wrong. You can go queen a8, but I will take it, and then you take back, and after knight e5, I mean, I'm genuinely curious what you ever plan to do about getting that bishop out. So knight b5, and... I have the rook on b1 protected, so rook b8 is not a thing I can take on c7. And if he plays c6, I go knight c7 anyway, and the c6 pawn will drop, and this all just falls. Guess he can play bishop d8. But it feels very bad. He can play knight a7 then. Okay, so he gives the pawn, which probably he had to do, but just to get the bishop some breathing room, but um, I don't believe it will save him. So knight c3. Um, I'm tempted to just take the bishop and go make a queen. That seems fine. Let's do it. Sort of a shame to trade off his bishop for anything, but it was going to come back to the game on b7 next. So, yeah, here we go. I think we'll have time for one more game after this. All right, oops, kitty, we are done here. I will not let you off the hook this game. Oh, still playing? Okay. Not much to see here, guys. All right, good game, Oops Kitty. I think we got time for one more. Let's play with, uh, see if I can find somebody strong. Let's play with Makovic. He has a high rating um, from Belarus. So good luck, Makovic. It's a short game because we only have five minutes, but um, it should be fun. So good luck, and let's have a good game. Still playing the chess ball repertoire. Uh, so we'll follow it to the extent that I can remember it. I gave B3, I'm pretty sure. But my head is foggy as well because I'm so darn tired. All right, I don't even remember. Did I start with knight C3 here? I'm pretty sure I did. I think I gave we start with knight C3. Question is, can I, can I make something of this pawn structure? So this structure with c takes d5, ed5 against b6 tends to be very good for white, but the big drawback of my position is that my pawn on b3 is misplaced uh, because it stops, it means rook c1 is less secure against, um, against stuff like uh, bishop a3. It also means I don't have queen a4 or queen b3. But yeah, so here I'm pretty sure I gave a3, and I believe black's supposed to play c5, but I've just, my head is so fuzzy right now. 
There's other nodes too, but okay. So knight bd7, I can go b4. And in the event of um, of bishop c4, I can play bishop f4, and then it's hard for him to stop knight d2. Which should be nice for me. All right, back to two coming, and now problems for black, maybe major problems. Yeah, I think he's misplayed this. You're supposed to, this getting the, anchoring the bishop on c4 is not a thing. I don't think you're able to pull that off. Yeah, so here I can take it, and stuff is going to start falling, and black is very much lost. So I take that, and then, um, yeah, white's well, completely winning. We'll start with that one. Revoke the rook back and then uh, this just rook c1 is fine. I have to be a little careful not to get my bishop trapped, but I guess he just wants to trade it off anyway. All right, so I'll go queen d2, I suppose. I don't really want to let him play c takes d6, as then that will make it harder for me to scoop up the c pawn. It also turns it into a passer that I might, in theory, actually care a little bit about. So let's get pieces to better squares of g5, a, b, bishop, e5. Um, all right, so now that e5 is a threat, you will have to do something about this. And once I take it this way, yeah, not much more to say here. Maybe six, sure. Let's just go d5 and h3, but I don't believe you're going to checkmate me, so I'm going to go a4, I'm going to go a5, I'm going to kick that knight away, I'm going to take c4, and we're, that should be a very convincing route to victory. All right, so let's just take this to be completely idiot-proof. It's not like that knight was going to mate me, but just in case, I was worried about somehow that knight landing on g4. But here, I've got all the extra pawns. After rook cd8, I must not take with the pawn on c6, but beyond that, I don't really see a way that I can manage to screw this up. All right, so I guess let's just take with, I'll take with what, b5? I can also play b5. Um, let's take with the rook and then the rook again. And you cannot play rook b8 even, so there's just no moves. I uh, have three pawns up, seems sufficient. All right, good game, Makovic. Uh, so yeah, this was fun, guys. I look forward to seeing everybody again in a couple of days for the next Banter Blitz session. Till then, sayonara. Want to raise your chest to a new level? Challenge Yourself is an exclusive, innovative experience designed for Chess24 Premium members. Train like a champ, with a unique set of lessons prepared by the coaches of the challengers. Boris Girlfriend and co. will help you improve your chess. Play a champ. Play a grandmaster each day in Banter Blitz. Take advantage of this incredible opportunity from June 10th. Go premium and challenge yourself.